color night. Jamie, thank you so much for joining me. We all know you as the wonderful Nate. Wasn't Nate such a wonderful character? Nate was such a fun character. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Thanks for having me, Tyler. I'm very, very pleased to be here. Big fan of your work. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, always stoked to talk about H2O. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good to meet you as well. I I'm just so grateful to continue to be meeting these people because as I'm sure you know and everyone knows, H2O was such a big part of my sort of preteen years. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of something that had such an impact on my life. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. It's really, it's always cool to hear that, you know, like particularly recently since um, it feels like H2O is uh, had had quite a kind of I don't know resurgence over the couple mm. cu the last couple of years, um, in part I think probably to do with you and your social media your TikToks and stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like um, it's just yeah, it's such a it's such a a great thing to have been a part of. Can you tell us a little bit about the audition process back in I think it was two thousand and five I want to yeah. say was when um that was going down what were you where were you at in life and what were you up to during that time yeah well I, I remember it quite clearly um so Burgess and I uh Burgess who played Zane um and I had been best friends since we were in preschool we weren't we probably weren't best friends in preschool we knew of each other I was actually like my mum used to tell me not to hang around with him because Burgess was kind of the naughty kid <laughs> and by about grade three we actually, we became friends and, um, and so in 2005, Burgess and I had gone to primary school, high school, and then we both auditioned for acting school, um, mm. when we were finishing grade 12, um, to go and study three years of acting, um, at a university in Queensland and, um, we both got into it. And so we were first year students at university living together and just, you know, like having the best time. And um, we had the same agent, this agent on the Gold mm -hmm. Coast, who we both signed up to when we were teenagers and, um, and hadn't really, hadn't had any professional work through this agent ever, but we were, um, we were in, in class together and we got this audition through for this show called H2O, Just Add Water. And um, I think my audition was for Lewis from memory. I think I was auditioning for Lewis. Burgess was auditioning for Zane. I'm not even sure the Nate character existed at that point, to be mm. completely honest. Um, and uh, it was like a, it was it was at Warner Brothers um, Studios on the Gold Coast, the audition process, and we did it in front of a whole theatre full of other auditionees, which is kind of oh, odd for film. Right? That's really odd for film, especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for, exactly. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, there was probably like fifty. Um, kids in our session all just sitting in these kind of theater this auditorium and watching everyone else audition and um i don't remember too much about the audition itself but i just remember doing a a lewis scene <laughs> and um and then anyway I, there might have been some callbacks and stuff i actually can't remember that's the only audition i remember but i remember bird just got the phone call about being cast as zane before i did he left you he <laughs> left uni and went you know went back to the gold coast <laughs> Because we'd both grown up on the Gold Coast. Mm. Um, and then shortly after, I got offered this role, Nate, you know. And, um, mm. and so, I also left, left uni, which was kind of... I mean, I was loving studying acting. Mm. But you study acting so that you can get a, a role, you know, or start working. And so, I was really wrapped to, to get that and, and leave the acting course. When you initially got offered the role... Did you have an idea of like what this character was going to be, how involved it was going to be? Did you have like the setup for the whole of the season or did Nate continue to make appearances as it went on? Yeah, I think um, it was it was very much a small role, Nate, in, particularly in season one, you know. Um, it was like basically he was kind of described as Zane's sidekick, you know, mm -hmm. and he kind of like laughs like an idiot at Zane's jokes and he's kind of just always by his side sort of thing. Which was great. I was like, that's my first role. It's gonna be fun as I yeah. get to I get to work with Burgess and um and uh 
but then yeah, as the, as the, as it progressed, I guess, you know, like, um, I became, um, was on set a bit, you know, so I became friendly with the directors and the producers and the rest of the cast. And so by the time season two came around, I think they just kind of wrote, wrote my character in a bit more. And I got to, Nate kind of developed more in the second and third season mm. and got to spread my wings a little bit more, you know? Yeah, that was awesome. It was, it was um, really, really apparent that, yeah, by the time it was season two, it was really like delving into more. You got more featured episodes and yeah. the, um, what is it? The, the whale poo. Um, the, yes. Ambigris. The ambigris. The ambigris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Amazing. <laughs> um, and yeah. And then in season three, obviously you became like a musician really. Um, yeah. Do you think like that was impacted by the fact that you are a musician in real life? Did they kind of write that yeah. in for you? Yeah. Jonathan M. Schiff, who's the producer, like kind mm. of, we knew him quite well. And um, he kind of kept an eye on what we were sort of doing. And at the time, me and Angus um, were actually like playing, we were playing music together and um, like every weekend. Um, mm. And Jonathan got wind of that and thought, oh, we should make a band in the show and all that kind of stuff. So I think that was inspired by, you know, what we were doing on the weekends sort of thing. So you're living on the Gold Coast during season one, particularly when you were still young and fresh, was H2O kind of the main focus of what you were doing or were you still auditioning for other projects as an actor and doing other mm. stuff as well? Well, during season one, um, I, well, there probably were a few auditions here and there, but mm. yeah, I think very much for all of us, like you've, you know, everyone that you've interviewed from the show has probably said already, but you know, like we, the cast just became so friendly. Mm. Um, we were all like, best mates you know it was like a little unit and we'd hang out together every weekend and stuff and so yeah it was it was mainly that and then we moved from from uh, the Gold Coast to Sydney all together mm -hmm. um, after season one and that's when we all started m more like more auditions for other shows and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Can you please tell us what were some of your favorite scenes to film that you can think of off the top of your head? Well you know like firstly I think just Nate is, was just such a fun character to play because I really, all I had to do was show up to set in a silly, fun and relaxed mood mm. and like know my lines. <laughs> but it was so fun because there was kind of no rules for that character. I could really just do whatever I want. I felt like I was trolling half the time I was on that <laughs> set, you know what I mean? I was like literally like making the most stupid faces and like, um, so it was such a freeing character to play. Um, I think that I really liked the song, like the songs. Yeah. I got to write those myself. Which oh, is cool. They're like, we yeah. want you to sing a song in this scene. And, you know, the script just kind of said, you know, like Nate sings a stupid song about, you know, this or that. So I got to write those lyrics and muck around. So that, that was, that was always fun. Um, I really like the, I think it's in episode, in season two, there's like a karate episode where I'm oh, like, yeah. I fought um, Lewis in the uh, yes. at the party and like I've done that scene. Me and my friend did that scene. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All the ambergris stuff was fun because yeah. you know for once the girls were um, you know attracted to me, which mm. was just just a, just a dream come true. Yeah, you know? of course those <laughs> girls. Of course, I, a lot of the um, actors from the show who I've spoken to have said that being able to obviously work on the sets that they had was just so incredible because, you know, very little of it was like green screen. Like the locations you are when you guys are like driving the boats. Did Nate ever go into the moon pool? I, I, Nate had no scenes in the moon pool, but okay. Jamie went in there um, any chance I could really. Yeah. How I was, was fascinated was that? by that stuff. Yeah. Well, I was fascinated. I was just like, I'd grown up dreaming of being an actor and then all of a sudden I was like in a, in a big film studio and like walking through and there was just this big, you know, it just looks like a big wooden box and then you kind of peel in and there's sand and all of a sudden you walk around and there's the moon pool and the lighting rigs over the top of it and all that kind of stuff. Like it was just so, so special. And still to this day when I do acting work on film and television, like I love going into the set of a house or something like that yeah. and like having a lie down on the bed and, just 
it's just a weird zone, you know, it it's is. a weird place. Yeah. yeah. It was super magical. And I remember that um, like on lunch breaks, because we were shooting at Warner Brothers mm. on the Gold Coast, Movie World, which is a theme park, is directly attached to the studios. Mm. And um, Burgess kind of grew up in the, on, on the film lot because his, his uh, parents worked in mm. film production. His dad was a producer and his mum was a production manager. And um, so he kind of had the, the um, he knew, he knew his way around the studio lot. And he would like sneak us into the theme park, into movie world. Um, at lunchtime, we'd go on like the Superman roller coaster and- and um, My favorite and then, ride, my favorite yeah, ride, Superman. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. And then we'd come back in and, and get back to work, you know? So yeah, wow. really, all that stuff was just super cool. Like one mm. really cool scene I remember shooting was, uh, and I don't even think I'm in this scene, I, 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 Burgess and I were shooting some underwater stuff. There's this big water tank oh, yeah. um, out the back of the studios. And, um, and I remember they like, they had a crane and they had this boat set, you know, mm. the boat that sinks, I can't remember, yeah. Burgess sinks in Miss yeah. Chatham's boat or something yep. like that. Mm. And they would lower the boat down under, under the water kind of thing. And Burgess had to do this drowning, yeah. drowning sequence. And there was actually a, um, like a scuba diver in the boat before it, you know, just hiding in a bedroom or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then once it sunk and Burgess shot his drowning scene, the scuba diver would swim through with a mask for Burgess mm -hmm. and give him oxygen and they'd swim back to the top. So that was pretty intense. Did you know how to scuba dive? Because there's a couple of things where you scuba dive, right? I'm pretty... Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, I had to get my scuba diving license for yeah. H2O. So I, cool. I, I, I had some scuba diving scene in... Um, in episode in season one um, yeah i can't remember exactly what it was but it was uh it required us to scuba dive so yeah i had to get the ticket for that and it took it took weeks like yeah the amount of stuff that i got to do for that show was really cool like sc the scuba diving ticket um also like karate lessons for that other scene <laughs> that we <spent. laughs> um was it probably only three one hour lessons or something but still wow. kind of cool yeah nice um, went had a guitar lesson for the ambergris episode I oh. didn't play guitar at that point. Oh wow! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh you did well. You did well. <laughs> yeah, they ended up overdubbing it anyway, but you know, had to you look know, sort of. You convincing. made it look real. You made it look real. Yeah. Nice. Um, and one more thing about that tank. I just remember mm. a really great day at work was I wasn't shooting, but I put the scuba gear on and went and lay on the bottom of the tank, and it was probably like twelve meters deep or something. It's very deep, deep tank, and I just lay at the bottom and watched the girls. Um, shooting some just slow motion swimming stuff. Wow. Just really fun. I was just lying on the bottom of the pool watching them go. <laughs> we spoke a little bit before about um, this kind of resurgence of H2O. Uh, what's been your experience with sort of the timeline between season three ending and where you are now? Yeah, I feel like it's really just only for me, just from my point of view, it feels like it's only really been the last like four or five years that it's actually mm. really true. I mean, truly become like a thing for mm. me. I mean, I, certainly while we were shooting the first season, we had no idea whatsoever what it would be. I think everyone in the cast just kind of thought, or well, maybe at least I did anyway, but I think we all kind of had the idea that this is just a kids show that will go on on the mm. afternoons. No one will watch it. And mm. that will be that, you know? Yeah. Um, and there was a year and a half. Uh, it wasn't for a year and a half after we made the first season that they, they called us up about the second season. We, had, we were not expecting to do a second season. Mm -hmm. So it was just the job was just kind of over for us. And certainly like walking around Sydney as the whole cast of that show, no one was ever coming up to us mm -hmm. and speaking to us on the street or any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it felt like an unknown show. I think at that point it was on like 4.30 in the afternoons in Australia yeah. um, on like Channel 10 and it was playing in a lot of different countries but, you know, of course that it was before social media mm. and stuff so we didn't interact with anyone really from any other countries. So it felt, yeah, very quiet and unknown and we were happy to do the second season um, and to do the third as well. I think by that time it was on like Nickelodeon and Disney and stuff. Yeah. But I didn't have those channels so I never saw it on those channels i never um interacted with anyone from nickelodeon or disney or anything um and even still at that point like anyone getting recognized on the street was really rare mm. and um special when it happened but yeah. rare yeah um and i think it 
it's probably Netflix was what reminded mm. – I, I, this is just my hypothesis. You might have a different one, but mm. I feel like it getting added to Netflix all over the world probably did something. And then, yeah. and then also I think the passing of time, you know, once a show starts to look a bit dated or, or a bit older or whatever and people go, oh, I watched that as a kid or whatever, that's when the nostalgic sort of love – cult status for the for the show kind of started to appear you know mm, yeah and none of us could have ever imagined it i don't think when i moved to america three years ago i knew that h2o had like played here but i mm. had no idea like how huge it was in the states and i you know i think i mean obviously many many more people here but i think the show's almost like more popular and successful like outside of our part of the world new zealand and australia yeah um, gotcha and then yeah. like throughout europe it's like huge there's like uh you know i have so many people who follow me from you know countries like croatia germany mm. and you know all of these countries that, romania uh, yeah bulgaria yeah. shout outs yeah shout yeah outs. we love you we love you my hypothesis as to why people go back to it is probably because when that when they were young and watching it like yourself um it was like a comfort show almost like yes. it's a very safe show mm. um and it's a very uh it's light it's safe it's fun and so you can imagine like having a stressful day at school or whatever and then just like <laughs> curling up on the couch and just disappearing into that um into that world for half an hour literally um, yeah because some of my favorite shows are shows that give me comfort and I'll watch them over and over and over, you know? Yeah. So I, I feel like it's played that role for a lot of people. Definitely. Yeah. But I think the writing is like really good, really strong. Mm. Um, and, you know, around that time, I would say this is a very funny parallel to make, but somehow I like made this parallel in my head because my absolute other favorite show was Lost. Okay, um, yep, yep. And, you know, Lost is all about, and that was on at like the exact same time. Like, I think they came out around the same time. Okay. You know, Lost was all about kind of like the mythology and like the questions and like, you know, all about how these characters are like dealing with the given circumstances. I really think H2O did a really good job of, you know, so these girls become mermaids and then it's like, but like, but why? And like, what's the reason? And mm. then, you know, when yeah. Zane starts to become sp suspicious and starts delving into it more, like there was a lot of very, very clever plot devices. I think that, you know, you can watch it as an adult and be invested in it. Like it's not, yeah. you know, it's not, it's, it wasn't, it's not one of those shows in my view that, you know, which it very easily could have been of like, yeah, this is a kid's afternoon show. Let's just kind of yeah. dumb it down and let's just make it like, yay, fun mermaids. Like it well, was. Well, you get invested in the stakes. I, I, yes, I do like it. remember that experience watching it myself as well. Like you don't want anyone to find out and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, how are they going to get out of this one and all that kind yes. of stuff as well. So it really evokes those sort of feelings, which is cool. For what the situation is, it feels real and it feels like viable like it feels like a situation that could exist so going back to how it kind of you know had this resurgence as we spoke about with netflix and with blowing up on social media have you found over the past few years has it has that kind of had like an effect on what kind of stuff you've been doing for the people who watch the show it's like you know we have this great nostalgia because, you know, we love watching it. But, you know, for you guys who actually experienced it, um, kind of having it all like really, really present in the world, has it had like an effect on you? I think that the whole cast is um, genuinely stoked and yeah. pleased um, that, it's, that it's had that. And um, it's like, it's really gratifying. It's, it's, I think everyone's just super grateful to have been part of something that that kind of moves into that sphere and and has um generations of fans you know different mm -hmm. generations of fans and um i think personally it hasn't made too much of an effect on my life other than things like doing an interview with 
Tyler Warwick on YouTube at the moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> Things like this are special. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, no, my, my life like generally feels pretty much the same, I think, as it would if I hadn't done H2O. I think. Ooh. Who knows though? It could be, it be no. That's that's not true. It would be entirely different. <laughs> but you know, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not affecting my my day to day life other than just getting tagged in like lots of things on Instagram and TikTok and stuff, which I love. I love it when yeah. people make edits. Yeah. Um. I think they're the funniest thing. Like just to <laughs> see, like a show that old, just people still just cutting new things together with it. It's just hilarious to me. I love it. So the show finished around, was it, I think it was 2010 was when the show finished. At that stage of your life, were you looking to do more acting work or were you kind of looking to delve more into your music at that point or both? Yeah, definitely both. Like I, I, I've been like acting, I did a lot of theatre like, like, like yourself mm-hmm. since I was like 12, 12 till, mm-hmm. 12 till 17 or 18 when I got cast in H2O. Um, I was just doing theatre, musical theatre, um, plays, that kind of thing. Um, and I'd gone to study acting at university when I was cast in H2O. So I very much, when we finished season one and we all moved to Sydney, we we're all like, let's all go and become actors, professional actors, you know. Mm-hmm. And that is still, that hasn't changed for me. I'm still, mm-hmm. still doing that, still auditioning, um, still working and uh but yes, I've also focused a lot on music. I have different sort of mus- musical um, projects and um, put a lot of work into them, do a lot of touring and recording and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's good to have, I like having those kind of both disciplines, you know, to pick up when the other one is quieter. In terms of acting, uh, do you have a kind of specific projects at the moment that you're really interested in? Are you, do you feel like you're, I mean, people ask me this question all the time and a very vague general question, but mm. are you, are you, do you feel like you're interested in continuing to do sort of theater and musical theater or you sit on film at the moment? I'm more, I'm like prob- lean probably more towards film and television. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's no particular style or whatever that I would like to do. Although I do really enjoy comedy, you know, mm. um, I love comedy and I love being silly on camera. Mm. Um, and I think in some ways I often get um, not, type, not typecast, but the roles that I usually get are usually either like kind of quite like Nate, like mm. a, an annoying kind of, an annoying kind of character or something or like a drug addict or something like that, yeah. you know, cause that's just how it goes. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I'm happy to do, happy to do whatever is called for, you know, but um, yeah. I've actually just been reaching out to some theater companies in Melbourne because I haven't done theater for so long and I've got a bit of a pang for it at the moment. So i um, hoping to do some of that this year. Personally, I think it's so important for, you know, artists, to be open to everything. And I think yeah. um, the more you can kind of work in other disciplines, you know, it all feeds into each other in my experience anyway. Yeah. I think. Well, mm. I think you're right. And like, sit, like sitting around, you know, film and television, you can create your own projects and I, and I do and, and have, mm. but also a lot of it is like sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. And I've been mm. guilty of that. Mm. I, I really have. And then, you know, I'll be like, um, oh, I wish I could do some acting. I, you know, I feel like working. And it kind of just snapped to me recently. I was like, go and do some theatre then. What are you mm. – don't, don't stop waiting for the phone to ring, you know? Yeah. The auditions always come through, but it's just – there's usually so much rejection involved, as you would know, in auditions. It's like you don't get – you get barely any of them. Yeah. And that's, that's the same for, for everyone and anyone, especially when starting out. So mm. it's um, – I'm trying to be more – proactive at the moment and and um you know if i want to practice acting and keep keep doing it then you know just get out there and do it any way you can even that's why i love doing that tiktok with you you know the tiktok we did on your channel was like that was fun yeah <laughs> it's yeah it was fun it's it's actually yeah. pro- go and follow me on tiktok if you're listening do it watching do it at- jamie timoney official yes there you go <laughs> do it do it and Maybe you could I'll be early to his following because he's still he's a new account so you could be early new account. be in that first be. 10k be in the first yeah. 10k seriously yeah 
<laughs> you mentioned um, that you've also been doing like some podcasting stuff as well. Um, yeah. What what is your podcast about? What kind of things do you as you yeah? Well, the, that? it's 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 kind of like it it all stems off my music. So I have two music projects. One's called Mossy, and then it's like an electronic an electronic pop project. Mm. Um, auto-tuned vocals and stuff. Check it Ooh. out, Mossy. Mossy. Mossy loves you on Instagram. Mossy yep. loves you. Yes, I follow um, it. I follow it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I have a punk band called These New South Wales. Mm. And that, that project is a little more complex because it's a punk band, but um, we, we also have our own production company and we produce two seasons of a mockumentary comedy for Comedy Central. Oh, um, wow. Which is all now on uploaded to YouTube. Cool. So, um. So there's two seasons of that. It's called These New South Wales. And we basically just play our, ourselves, but um, like kind of the desperate sort of pathetic versions of ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we're in a very unsuccessful band trying to be a successful band and sort of embarrassing ourselves in the process. Cool. Um, and then also from there, my bandmate and I uh, kind of uh, started a podcast as well. And it's called What a Great Punk. And we interview... Um, Mainly musicians, but mm. comedians, actors. In fact, you should come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. I'd you love to. You should come on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, but and great. that's really good. We we do two episodes a week, mm. um, and you can listen on like Spotify or Apple, wherever you listen to mm. your podcast. It's free. It's called What a Great Punk. So go check that out as well. So they're my kind of they're my main streams of uh, work, I guess. You know. Nice. So you mentioned earlier, obviously, how you grew up with Burgess, which is amazing. That's so cool that you got to do that show together. Um, mm. How about other members from the cast? Are there still uh, members from the cast who you still chat with and talk about the show and what they're currently up to? Yeah, definitely. I think it's like pretty much all of them, I would say. Mm. Um like Angus and I uh, live together. Um, well, Burgess and I, Burgess, me and Angus live together after season one. Um, but Angus and I live together in a few other households as well. And um, we played in bands together around Sydney for years. So we grew really tight. And um, I still remember the night I met Angus actually at the, at the launch party of H2O season one filming. And we were both standing in the bar waiting to get a, I was probably getting a beer. He was probably getting a soft drink of some description, <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> and, um, and we just got chatting and just f- from the instant I met him, I just knew he was a beautiful, beautiful man. And we just became such good friends. Um, so I-, I reckon I speak to Angus pretty frequently, mm. pretty frequently. We're, ne- we're not usually in the same city, mm. but when we do talk, we usually talk for about an hour on the phone and really kind of, Get, get, you know, Angus, like, you know, you've had yeah. a chat to him. He yes. loves the conversation. And loves the conversation. So we cool. love to catch up and um, talk about all sorts, sorts of things. And um, I, I speak to Kariba every now and then. Mm-hmm. Kariba and I dated for a long time. We were, yeah. we were dating all throughout the, the entire thing. We, we, mm. we met on the first week of shooting and dated for eight years after that. Oh, wow. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And we ended our relationship very um, amicably and remain friends now. So cool. we don't talk all the time, but we, we, we put a phone call in every, every now and then and, and have a good catch up. <laughs> um, chat to Phoebe a fair bit on social media, just mm-hmm. back and forth, you know. Um, and whenever we're in the same city, if I ever go to America or, um, and, you know, if it's New York or LA and Phoebe's there, we go out for dinner or whatever and hang out, which is always good. Um, She's uh, hilarious. And, um, and I reply to Luke Mitchell's stories a mm. lot. He played Will. Yeah. <laughs> Will, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a hunk. You know, he's a big hunk. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, you just got to tell. When someone's a hunk, you just got to tell them every now and then. You know you what I mean? You just have to let so them every know. Every now and then, I just, I, just tell, I just say, what's up, hunk? Yeah. Um, Good. But he is just such a sweetheart too. I just love that guy so much. Um, yeah. And I chatted to Claire on the phone probably about six months ago for the first time in whew, would have been 10 years. Wow. And um, she was really funny. I just like, <laughs> don't think I knew how funny she was back yeah. then. <laughs> or maybe she's gotten funnier, but she was cracking mm-hmm. me up the whole time. Yeah. Well, she, I mean, obviously she was gone for the last season as well. So yeah, it kind of makes it. And I mean, as we said, you were really 
probably the most involved in season three, really. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, definitely. So yeah, also. Yeah. But um I love yeah, I love Claire. I think she's really funny on socials with her kids and stuff. So yeah. I always write back to to her stories and yeah. And um yeah. yeah, that's that's probably it. I ran into Cleo on Venice Beach. Cleo Massey. Oh, was, she told me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that. Yeah. She said I forgot, yeah. She said that you like you guys hadn't seen each other and like yeah, the, the whole thing, and then you saw each other yeah. like in LA. That's that's yeah. so funny, Jamie. Thank you so so much for joining me. Um, it was so amazing to hear about your experience with H two O. We are all going to follow your TikTok. Um, I'll put yes. the links down in the bio here, so go and follow Jamie. Go and check it out. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Tal. It's been an absolute pleasure, and thanks for listening and watching, everyone. Yes.